The fortune teller Baba arc takes place after the events of the Red Ribbon Army. Continuing their journey from Master Roshi's house, Yamcha points out Goku's tattered and smelly clothes after his battle with the Red Ribbon Army. Deciding to remedy this before having their fortunes told, the group venture into a nearby town. Goku, disapproving of the late 19th century schoolboy attire suggested by the tailor, incites laughter from his friend. Despite Yamcha's comedic insistence that it suits him well, Goku opts for a similar outfit with a Kame symbol and a hole for his tail. The tailor estimates an hour for completion, and Yamcha discreetly requests the use of the cheapest fabric. Leaving the store, the group ponder their next move. Goku decides to fetch Upa in the meantime, and riding on Nimbus, returns to Korin Tower. Goku calls out to Upa, and reuniting with him, Goku shares his victory over the Red Ribbon Army and possession of six Dragon Balls. He tells Upa that he can come with him while they search for the remaining Dragon Ball, and the two take off, Goku asserting that he knows someone who can find it for him. Returning to town on Nimbus, Goku introduces Upa to the others. Yamcha informs Goku that his clothes are ready, prompting Krillin to cheekily inquire if Upa is a cute girl. Goku, confidently asserting that Upa's a boy, prompts disappointment from Krillin, as Yamcha scolds Goku for undressing in public. Delighted with his new attire, Goku and the team take flight. After some searching, Krillin spots a structure floating on a lake in the desert, assumed to be Baba's palace. Upon arrival, they encounter a group of strong men as a friendly-looking ghost suddenly appears telling everyone to get in line. Goku questions the ghost on if they've reached portion seller Baba's place, prompting correction that Baba is a fortune teller. The ghost then tells Goku and the others to wait their turn, as Yamcha finds it odd that there are mostly strong individuals here. However, upon witnessing a satisfied older couple leaving with their fortune told, Krillin expresses relief. The ghost then calls for the group of buff individuals to step forward, and pumped up, they head inside, only to return moments later battered and bruised. This shock Yamcha and Krillin as their group is called on next, entering the palace and standing before an old woman floating on a crystal ball. Goku once again questions if she's portion seller Baba, prompting a correction to fortune teller. She offers to locate what the group is seeking for 10 million zenny, but when they admit they lack the funds, she states she figured as much and proposes a challenge. Leading them to what appears to be an arena on the lake, Baba explains that in order to receive their fortune, Goku and the others will be battling her five fighters one at a time. Defeating all five will grant them a free fortune telling, but if they lose, they'll keep fighting until everyone's defeated. Excited by the prospect, Krillin boasts of their martial arts prowess from the Tenkaichi Budokai, amusing Baba, who looks forward to the challenge. Baba advises the group to reconsider, given their young age, but Krillin and Yamcha remain unfazed. Poir and Upa, however, express their non-combatant status, and Goku asserts he, Yamcha, and Krillin will be the only ones fighting. Baba questions the viability of only three warriors facing her formidable team of five. Despite this, Krillin maintains his confidence, and Yamcha seeks clarification on the rules, learning that surrender or falling into the lake results in a loss. Baba questions who will go first, and Krillin confidently steps up. Convinced he can defeat all five opponents by himself, Krillin faces Dracula Man, a bat that transforms into a peculiar vampire resembling a kickboxer. Krillin initially underestimates Dracula Man's frail appearance and charges in, but the opponent its swift movements prove challenging. Dracula Man transforms into a bat, evading Krillin's attacks. Suddenly, he latches onto Krillin's head and bites down, much to the surprise of his friends. Dracula Man drinks Krillin's blood, and encouraged by Goku, Krillin attempts to shake off Dracula Man, Baba suggesting he give up before bleeding excessively. In a daring move, Krillin performs a backflip with Dracula Man still on his head, causing him to release his grip. However, Krillin lands head first, prompting Baba to offer a blood transfusion after his defeat. Despite the offer, Krillin insists on continuing, but blood squirts from the wounds on his head. Yamcha advises Krillin to calm down, as anger will only lead to more blood loss, but Goku jokingly tells Krillin it looks like he grew hair, causing the fighter to grow angrier and lose more blood. Having lost a significant amount, Krillin becomes lightheaded and is kicked into the lake by Dracula Man, losing the match. Following a blood transfusion from the ghost, Krillin's head is taped up. Goku criticizes his quick defeat, leading to a heated exchange. Baba then inquires about the next challenger to face Dracula Man. After some discussion, Goku and the others question if they can have five people on their team after all, and Baba accepts, as Poir and Upa volunteer to fight next, able to do so together due to their small size. Yamcha outlines the plan, and as they enter the ring, Upa chews on something. Dracula Man charges toward them, but Upa breathes garlic in his face, one of the weaknesses of vampires. Annoyed, Dracula Man turns into a bat and targets 
bites Poir. Poir transforms into a porcupine, and when Dracula Man catches him in his mouth, he screams out in pain, having swallowed spikes. Spitting Poir out, Dracula Man looks up to find Upa standing in the form of a cross. In an attempt to escape, Dracula Man transforms into a bat, but Poir transforms into a hand and swats him into the lake. With victory secured, the dragon team cheer as Baba watches in amusement. With a warning that the fighters will only get stronger moving forward, Yamcha instructs Poir and Upa to stay back, expressing his determination to face the remaining threats alone. Baba notes that the group are now down to two fighters against her four, but Yamcha confidently asserts that he'll defeat the remaining opponents on his own. Goku, concerned about not having a chance to fight, is told by Yamcha that he'll be used as a last ditched effort should they run into trouble. Demanding the next fighter, Yamcha is surprised when Baba claims that the opponent is already present. Mr. Invisible, the Invisible Man. As the match begins, Mr. Invisible attacks Yamcha, who struggles to land hits while repeatedly getting struck himself. Baba questions the disappearance of Yamcha's confidence, and Goku is perplexed by Yamcha seemingly getting beaten with no visible opponent. Suddenly, Krillin urges Goku to fetch Master Roshi and Bulma without providing a clear reason. Following Krillin's advice, Goku swiftly flies off on Nimbus, leaving Baba to wonder about who the kid is as she recognizes the cloud. Meanwhile, Yamcha, in the midst of his struggle, realizes he'll have to listen for the slightest noise whenever his opponent moves. Hearing movement moments after, Yamcha charges at the Invisible Man with a kick, merely grazing him and confidently declaring his new strategy. However, Baba attempts to distract Yamcha by singing, allowing Mr. Invisible another opportunity to strike. Yamcha, realizing that singing hides the Invisible Man's movements, struggles and contemplates his chances of victory. At the same time, Goku returns with Master Roshi and Bulma. Bulma questions what the urgency is, but having little time to explain, Krillin positions her and Roshi to face each other. Bulma questions Yamcha's struggle as Krillin urges her to focus, simultaneously telling Roshi to adjust his head a little bit more. With both allies in position, Krillin waits for the perfect moment and exposes Bulma's top causing Master Roshi's nose to bleed, splashing all over the Invisible Man. With his opponent now visible, Yamcha utilizes his Wolf Fang Fist technique to pound him relentlessly, prompting Mr. Invisible to surrender with a white flag. Excitement ensues, and Bulma expresses her disapproval by slugging Krillin over the head and yelling at him for exposing her. Krillin, however, defends himself by stating he was helping her boyfriend, and Master Roshi, although initially critical, acknowledges the effectiveness of Krillin's strategy. Nearby, Baba commits ends the group's efforts, but notes that there are still three fighters remaining. Yamcha notices Master Roshi and Bulma's arrival, which prompts Bulma to ask about the purpose of the matches. Krillin explains Fortune Teller Baba's policy, and to everyone's surprise, Master Roshi identifies Baba as his big sister, revealing their familial relationship. Baba confirms that Master Roshi is still the same lewd person he's always been, and Roshi humorously tells her to leave him alone. Krillin proposes asking Baba for their fortune directly rather than going through the hassle of matches, but Baba insists on money or matches for the entertainment they provide her. Aiming to start the next fight, Baba leads the group to the next location, and along the way, Bulma inquires about Upa. Upa introduces himself and mentions Goku's mission to revive his father, prompting a warm greeting from her. Everyone enters a building and ascends a spiral staircase, Master Roshi explaining to Yamcha that they're headed for the Devil's Toilet. Feeling somewhat nervous about the upcoming challenge, Yamcha inquires for advice, but Roshi simply tells him not to die. Baba instructs Yamcha to enter a door while the rest continue upstairs, and they'll observe the match from a window above. Inside the room, Two giant devil statues with protruding tongues face each other, creating a small gap between the tongues. Yamcha finds himself in one of the mouths above a pit of deadly poison, where Baba, floating nearby, tells him that if he or his opponent fall off, they'll die. To demonstrate, she pulls out a slab of meat and drops it in the poison as everyone watches it melt away. Baba gives Yamcha another chance to surrender, but holding it together, he insists on fighting. Bulma then remarks on the unattractive traits of the Roshi family as Baba calls out her third warrior, the dried up gladiator, Mummy Man. Upon explaining that a surrender or death results in a loss, Baba starts the match. Yamcha plans to use his speed and technique in the confined space, assuming Mummy Man will be slow. But as he runs across, Mummy Man does the same, effortlessly leaping over him. Although Yamcha narrowly avoids Mummy Man's kick, a flurry of punches follow as Goku remains unimpressed on the sidelines. Yamcha eventually takes a hit in the face and 
and topples over, but manages to grab the platform before falling down, much to everyone's shock. Standing over him, Mummy Man tells the fighter to get up, stating it won't be fun if he wins this easily. Yamcha successfully climbs back up, met with the annoying chance from Bulma to defeat the bandaged fighter. Employing his wolf fang fist, Yamcha charges in, but finds Mummy Man elusive, deftly evading all attacks. Mummy Man executes a swift sweep kick, toppling Yamcha, followed by a jump and a knee to the stomach. Standing over Yamcha, Mummy Man deems him boring and suggests quitting. Seizing the moment, Yamcha retaliates, knocking Mummy Man off the platform, much to everyone's surprise. However, Mummy Man launches a bandage, latches onto the statue's tongue, swings to the wall, and propels himself back up landing in front of Yamcha. Determined to conclude the match, Mummy Man swiftly punches Yamcha's face, knees his gut, pounds the back of his neck, and holds him over the lake of poison, prompting Yamcha to concede defeat. Yamcha ascends the stairs to the skybox where everyone was watching, as Bulma naively notes he's pathetic for losing to such a beaten up opponent. Yamcha apologizes to Goku for losing the match, but excited, the young warrior volunteers to fight next, despite Baba's attempt to dishearten it. The group wish Goku good luck as he runs off and emerges in front of Mummy Man, the fighter making fun of the boy who doesn't look that tough to him. Baba shares a laugh, a Asserting Goku has no chance of victory, but when Roshi is questioned by Krillin on Goku's strength, the old man ponders on the boy's recent training. Baba initiates the next match, and initially overconfident, Mummy Man expresses curiosity about the lack of openings with this new challenge. Mummy Man remains intrigued by Goku, but Baba urges him to proceed. Charging at Goku, Mummy Man lands a gut punch followed by an uppercut. A powerful kick propels Goku into one of the statue's faces, cracking it, and he lands face first back on the tongue. Concern sweeps through the onlookers, while Mummy Man and Baba find amusement in the situation. To their surprise though, Goku rises, declaring it's his turn. As he calmly walks toward Mummy Man, Roshi notes that Goku hasn't taken any damage from any of his attacks. Enraged, Mummy Man faces Goku, swinging at him, but Goku deftly ducks the attack and retaliates with a powerful gut punch, knocking Mummy Man unconscious. This development shocks Baba as Goku holds him over his head head, inquiring about the next match. Despite the shock from the spectators, Master Roshi isn't overly surprised, considering Goku's solo annihilation of the Red Ribbon Army. Yamcha and Krillin ponder the kind of training their friend underwent, and Goku questions if there are only two fighters left prompting Baba's irritation. Out of sight, the other two fighters observe, the blue-looking individual marveling at Goku's power. The other fighter wearing a cat-like mask laughs, but when questioned on his thoughts toward Goku, he remains silent. Baba introduces the next challenger, Devil Man, who appears in front of Goku. At the same time, Master Roshi reflects on the increasing strength of each opponent and wonders about the final one, as Devil Man is usually Baba's trump card in the lineup. Baba initiates the match, and Devil Man takes with his wings, declaring that he'll send Goku to hell. Despite Devil Man descending rapidly, Goku effortlessly kicks him, leaving everyone astonished by the boy's incredible speed. Goku perceives Devil Man as weak, eliciting frustration from the latter. Urged by Baba to expedite the match, Devil Man confronts Goku once more. Attempting to strike Goku, Devil Man finds his swipes evading. Landing further away, Goku retaliates by running toward Devil Man and delivering a punch to the face, dislodging a tooth and sending him off the platform. Despite the setback, Devil Man regains his position by utilizing his wings, boasting that he can't be defeated so easily. However, Goku asserts he was going easy on Devil Man, prompting surprise from it. The audience expresses satisfaction with Goku's performance, assuming Devil Man is nothing special. Roshi, however, corrects them, stating that Devil Man has won the Tenkaichi Budokai twice. He goes on to say that Goku is just overwhelmingly powerful, making Devil Man look weak in comparison. At the same time, Baba scolds Devil Man for slacking off, prompting him to reveal his true power. Devil Man places two index and middle fingers to his head, explaining how this technique can cause someone's heart to explode if there's even a hint of evil within. Threatening Goku with imminent death, Devil Man unleashes the attack. Despite Baba's plea to stop, the wave emanating from Devil Man's fingers reaches Goku and makes contact. Devil Man anticipates Goku's explosion, causing concern among the onlookers. However, 
Goku remains unfazed, perplexed by the peculiar light surrounding him. The light vanishes, prompting surprise from Devilman and Baba, as they know Goku doesn't have any evil in his heart at all. Relieved that Goku is unharmed, the spectators celebrate, Bulma noting that if the technique had been used on Master Roshi, it probably would have worked. Infuriated with the ineffectiveness of his best attack, Devilman conjures a pitchfork and swipes at Goku, who expresses displeasure at the use of a weapon. Growing serious, Goku lunges and kicks Devilman with intense force, so impactful that Baba and the others are left in awe. When the attack ends, Devilman is seen head first through the wall, Goku acknowledging that he might have overdone it a little. Baba is at a loss for words, and Master Roshi, having missed the attack connect, is astonished by Goku's remarkable speed. Everyone, except Baba, is delighted for Goku's success, and Goku urges her to bring out the next fighter. Despite Baba's belief that Goku won't get any further, she he calls out the remaining challenger, and he calmly makes his appearance. The mysterious man then questions Baba for a favor, noting that he'd like to fight at the arena outside, as this one is a bit cramped. Baba obliges and the group head outside, Krillin whispering to Goku that he'll definitely win this battle. Noticing Goku's silence though, Krillin wonders if he's tired, to which Goku responds that the man he's about to fight smells nice. Krillin states that maybe he ate something tasty a moment ago, but Goku insists it's more of a joyful scent prompting Krillin to acknowledge Goku's tendency to say unusual things. Arriving at the ring, the contestant confides in Baba as the others arrive. At the same time, Yamcha questions Roshi's well-being, noting he's been quiet for a while now. Assuming Roshi to be worried about the upcoming fight, Bulma reassures him, stating that Goku won't lose. However, Roshi senses familiarity in the fighter's voice and considers him a remarkable presence. The others are skeptical, stating he doesn't look like much, and Baba is intrigued by the unknown information the fighter shared, as Goku questions if they can begin the match. Baba then explains the rules, as the match will end when one of the contestants cries uncle. She asserts that she'll reveal the location of the Dragon Ball should Goku emerge victorious, and his friends wish him good luck before the match begins. The stranger urges Goku to do a pre-match bow before the fight, and Goku obliges. Baba initiates the match, and the two combatants engage in a prolonged face-off. Goku senses the fighter's uniqueness and intensity, and the stranger urges the boy to attack him, prompting Goku to charge in. The fighter attempts a swipe, but Goku dodges and attempts a punch. The fighter catches the punch, and the two engage in a struggle, and as they break apart, the fighter leaps behind Goku, lunges from the arena floor, and knocks Goku away. Goku, however, However, breaks his fall, charges in, and kicks the fighter in his face, leaving everyone astonished. Master Roshi is thoroughly impressed by the intense confrontation unfolding before him. The fighter resumes his attack on Goku, throwing punches, but Goku adeptly blocks and counters with a kick. Seizing Goku's foot, the fighter slams him face first and hurls him into the air. In a remarkable display of agility, the fighter leaps and catches up with Goku, kicking him back down to the ring. Goku descends rapidly and crashes, the fighter stating that even someone as amazing as Goku won't be able to just brush that off. Goku, however, rebounds swiftly and retaliates by kicking the fighter into a nearby building. Undeterred, the fighter launches off the building, descending toward Goku with a kick. In an unusual move, Goku chooses to confront the impending attack head-on as he clenches his body. The fighter's kick lands, but doesn't affect Goku as he backs away. Goku notes how excited he's getting as the fighter stands in awe at the boy's resilience, noting that he's really toughened himself. Up. In response, the fighter decides to surprise Goku with another technique as he begins to chant the Kamehameha. This development surprises everyone as the fighter unleashes the attack, the beam headed for Goku at super speed. Goku, however, skillfully avoids the Kamehameha by leaving an after image, leaving the real Goku soaring in the air. The fighter is surprised that Goku is familiar with the after image technique, and Master Roshi finds the Kamehameha from a stranger hard to believe as he continues to ponder his identity. Goku descends, preparing for his own attack, and perceiving the boy as vulnerable in midair, the fighter readies another Kamehameha. Unexpectedly though, Goku prepares his own blast, surprising the fighter, as the boy is familiar with that technique as well. As Goku unleashes the Kamehameha, it shatters tiles and propels the fighter backward. Goku descends, and capitalizing on the opportunity, delivers a knee to the downed fighter's gut. Shocking Baba and initially appearing victorious, Goku's triumph is short-lived as the fighter laughs and seizes Goku's tail. Goku's strength diminishes as the fighter stands up, and Yamcha reveals Goku's weakness, emphasizing how grabbing his tail saps his strength, recalling a previous encounter when the
the Ox King's daughter exploited this vulnerability. Yamcha figures that the fighter must be really amazing to have figured this out on his own, as he holds Goku by the tail, with Baba expressing delight. Master Roshi, however, deduces the fighter's identity, noting that he didn't spot Goku's weak point, but knew it all along. This information shocks the group, as the fighter continues to slam Goku around. Meanwhile in space, the Pilaf gang observes the events on a satellite monitor and learns of Goku's tail weakness. Excited about the potential to rule the world, Pilaf reveals his unique case, shielding the seventh and final Dragon Ball from radar detection. Unfazed, Pilaf exclaims that with his satellite, he can pinpoint the remaining Dragon Balls and declares no fear of Goku, as he, Shu, and Mai take off to claim the magical orbs. Back at the match, the fighter persistently swings Goku by his tail, urging him to give up, though Goku refuses. Oma questions how the fighter could have possibly known about Goku's weakness, and Master Roshi drops a bombshell, revealing the fighter as Goku's grandfather, son Gohan. This revelation shocks everyone, and just before being slammed again, Goku's tail unexpectedly rips off, remaining in Gohan's grasp. Goku is in considerable pain, and it appears that the fighter didn't intend to sever his tail. The group, however, is more concerned about the presence of Goku's deceased grandfather, and Master Roshi explains the halo above his head signifies his status. Despite Goku's frustration over losing his tail, he readies himself for an attack, only for the fighter to surrender, much to his confusion. The fighter admires Goku's strength, prompting Goku to question how he knows his name. The fighter merely suggests Goku should have been more cautious with his tail, and as he removes his mask, he reveals himself as son Gohan. Tearing up at the sight of his grandpa, Goku rushes over, calling to him, and embraces Gohan. Gohan apologizes to Goku for being rough with his tail, but advises it was a liability, and questions the boy on if he'd been training with Master Roshi for the past few years, to which he confirms. Gohan greets his former master, and Goku eagerly questions when his grandpa was resurrected. However, Gohan says he hasn't been brought back to life, and explains that fortune teller Baba is capable of moving freely between the living world world and the afterlife, so she scouts deceased martial arts masters from time to time and pays them handsomely to come fight matches for her. Goku questions if his grandpa will come live with him again, but Gohan says he's only able to return for one day. Bulma questions if he and Goku's meeting today was pure coincidence, but Roshi cuts in, noting that Baba can see the future and foresaw the arrival of the Dragon Team. Gohan expresses gratitude to Master Roshi for training Goku, and discreetly mentions the great ape transformation within him, but Roshi knows there's no need to worry about it anymore as he destroyed the moon. Telling his grandpa that he's got something amazing to show him, Goku approaches with the Dragon Balls he's collected, confusing Gohan as he wonders why there are six other balls similar to the four star ball. Bulma then explains the power of the magical orbs, prompting surprise from Gohan. Krillin reassures Upa that with all seven soon to be in their possession, they'll use them to revive his father. But Upa, concerned, wonders if they should use the Dragon Balls for Goku's grandfather instead. Dead. Gohan, enjoying the afterlife, expresses his preference for it due to good looking women around, and Yamcha jokes about Master Roshi's number one disciple being crazy for women. As promised, Baba offers a fortune telling session for the group's victory. Gohan expresses readiness to return to the afterlife, and Goku can't believe his grandpa is leaving so soon. Gohan expresses appreciation at seeing Goku's growth and bids farewell thanking Baba and stating that he looks forward to seeing Goku grow up even more. He tells the rest of the group that sooner or later, he'll meet them in the afterlife as well, and after bidding a final goodbye to Master Roshi and Goku, Gohan disappears. Goku vows to train his tail when it returns and grow much stronger, and when Baba uses her crystal to unveil the final Dragon Ball's location, it projects an image of a moving car. Bulma notices something strange, as a vehicle shouldn't stop the Dragon Ball from appearing on the radar, and when Goku questions the direction, Baba points to a location nearby, filling Goku with excitement. Goku announces his departure and summons the flying Nimbus. He entrusts Upa with the Dragon Balls during his absence, hops on Nimbus and flies away. Meanwhile, in their car, Pilaf briefs Mai and Shu on the plan. Pilaf envisions ruling the world, and when Shu questions his plans of world domination, Pilaf dismisses it as a secret. Approaching rapidly, Goku spots the car, leaps onto the roof, and peeks through the windshield, surprising the Pilaf team. The three scream out, and the car swerves off the road, causing Goku to fall. Recognizing Pilaf and his minions, Goku decides to confront them. Mai questions Pilaf on what they should do 
do, given they didn't expect to see Goku so soon. But Pilaf decides to proceed with their plan at this location. The trio exits the car, and Goku, suspecting their nefarious intentions, suggests handing over the Dragon Ball quietly. Pilaf laughs, declaring his intention to gather all seven Dragon Balls, and proposes a duel. If he wins, he gets Goku's six Dragon Balls, and if Goku wins, he gets their Dragon Ball. Questioning how they know about his six Dragon Balls, Goku agrees, to which the Pilaf gang prepare themselves for the confrontation. They throw out capsules, revealing three giant mecha. Pilaf's is small and round, Mai's is large and fat, and Shu's is tall with long legs and a tiny upper body. Pilaf taunts Goku, claiming their designs are outrageously powerful, but Goku is ready to fight regardless. Pilaf orders Mai to attack, but when she hesitates, Goku grows impatient and flies over, delivering a jump kick to Pilaf's mecha that sends him crashing into a mountain. Goku expresses disbelief at the weakness of the trio, while Mai and Shu attend to Pilaf. Angered, Pilaf thinks to himself that he never imagined Goku would be this strong, but announces his tail grab plan, alerting Mai and Shu. The three encircle Goku, and Pilaf initiates a countdown. However, Shu interrupts, stating he can't see Goku's tail and speculates it might be in his pants. Requesting a timeout, Pilaf alters the plan as he and his minions discuss. The three Pilaf machines then circle Goku again, this time Pilaf distracting Goku while Mai grabs him from behind and Shu's mecha blasts him with fire. Pilaf Pilaf notes Goku's burning clothes, which reveal his bare bottom, and moves to grab his tail, only to find it missing. As Goku raises his power to break free, Mai alerts Pilaf of Goku's strength, urging him to hurry as she can't hold him any longer. Shu questions Pilaf on why he isn't moving, but Pilaf, in awe, tells the others that Goku doesn't have a tail to grab. This revelation shocks Mai and Shu, and Goku breaks free from Mai's mecha, realizing his pants are gone. Confused about the next step, Mai wonders what to do. Pilaf decides to showcase their true power, and the trio combine their three Pilaf machines into one giant unit towering over Goku. However, Goku swiftly retaliates with a Kamehameha, blowing off the left arm of the mecha. Mai reports that her mecha isn't malfunctioning, leading Pilaf to discard it and switch to ostrich mode. Pilaf's round mecha hops onto Shu's mecha's tail, while Mai jumps onto its back, resembling an ostrich. They attempt to flee, but Goku gives chase, closing the gap. Pilaf orders a missile launch that comes hurtling at the boy, but Goku catches it, hurtling it back and destroys their ostrich-like contraption. Standing over the defeated trio, Goku declares victory, demanding the Dragon Ball. Pilaf hands over the one-star ball, and Goku, now needing clothes, takes Shu's outfit, which happens to fit perfect. Goku returns to Baba's palace on Nimbus, clutching the one-star ball. Upon landing in the ring, he displays the seventh Dragon Ball to everyone, sparking Krillin's curiosity about his changed attire. Goku urges Upa to leave immediately, recalling Nimbus. Saying his goodbyes, Goku says he'll be back after he brings back Upa's father, and Upa thanks everyone for their help. The two swiftly depart, leaving Master Roshi commenting on Goku's impatience. Krillin voices disappointment about not seeing Shenron, prompting Baba to remark that Goku is indeed an amazing kid and will one day save the world. Krillin questions what Baba means by this, and she says she received a vague premonition about it as everyone ponders her statement. Back at Korin Tower, Goku and Upa arrive. Upa points to his father's grave, and Goku who lays out all seven Dragon Balls, preparing to summon Shenron. He calls out to the dragon to appear, and the sky suddenly darkens. The Dragon Balls then begin to glow, and Shenron emerges from the light, surprising Upa and Goku. Shenron tells the two to speak their wish, and Upa steps forward, earnestly asking Shenron to revive his father. Shenron readily agrees, and from the grave, there's movement. To Goku and Upa's amazement, Bora emerges from the dirt, brought back to life. Bora rushes from his grave, and Upa, overcome with emotion, rushes over to greet him. Bora, confused, questions what's happening, and Upa joyfully explains that Goku used the Dragon Balls to bring him back to life. Shenron declares the wish granted and bids farewell before disappearing, and the Dragon Balls begin to disperse. Locking on to which one resembles the four-star ball though, Goku seizes the opportunity to snatch the magical orb the moment they scatter, as they all turn to stone. 
the sky returns to normal, and when Upa inquires about Goku's sudden jump, Goku reveals his desire for his grandpa's four-star ball, now petrified until one year's time. Bora expresses gratitude for all Goku's done for him, but the boy is just happy to see him alive again. Upa recounts how Goku climbed Korin Tower to avenge Bora's death, to which Bora states that Goku is akin to a child of God. As Goku prepares to depart, Upa and Bora express disappointment that he won't stay longer. They decide to meet again someday though, and Goku calls for Nimbus, bidding farewell as he flies off. Returning to Baba's palace, Goku shares the news of Bora's resurrection. Suddenly, he excuses himself to pee at the edge of the ring, and Krillin wonders if Goku will indeed save the world someday. Bulma questions whether Goku will resume searching for his grandfather's memento in a year, and Goku reveals the petrified four-star ball, noting he managed to grab it before before it flew off. Krillin queries Goku's plans now that he has the ball, and Goku expresses his intention to train for the next Tenkaichi Budokai. Yamcha announces his plan to train under Master Roshi, which excites Goku. Bulma warns Yamcha not to become a pervert due to his training, and Goku grows delighted that he and his friends will be training together. However, Master Roshi tells Goku that he'll be training separately from the rest to advance his already amazing skills. Goku insists on wanting to get stronger, and Roshi advises him to explore the big world to achieve greater strength. They plan to meet again at the next Tenkaichi Budokai, and Krillin expresses disbelief at not being able to see Goku for five years. Roshi, however, explains that it will only be three years due to the growing number of contestants, and Goku agrees to meet everyone then. Krillin and Yamcha bid Goku farewell, and Goku playfully tells Bulma he hopes she becomes more mature, prompting her to yell at him. As Goku prepares to leave, calling for Nimbus, Master Roshi he insists he must walk, run, and swim across the world instead, as it'll be much better for training. This comment surprises everyone, but unfazed, Goku runs off through the entrance of Baba's palace, exclaiming that he'll see everyone in three years. As the others ponder Goku's easygoing nature, Master Roshi informs everyone that they'll also be running home prompting the beginning of their rigorous training. Thus, Goku embarks on a journey in search of greater strength, and Yamcha and Krillin train diligently under Master Roshi for three years, honing their abilities until the 22nd Tenkaichi Budokai begins. The Fortune Teller Baba arc is a fun and interesting arc in the story of Dragon Ball, filled with the intrigue of intense battles, but also lighthearted moments of reunion and life. But what did you think of this arc? Did you enjoy it? Let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time.